Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to see our future videos. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Uh, once again, kind of a shooting from a hip kind of show. This is uh, episode 128 and uh, today I have Papa Drew with me. How are you today? Good. How are you doing? Well, <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. So uh, we're, uh, we're experimenting with your new microphone today. Yeah, how do I sound? You you look awesome. You sound good. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you that are watching the show, um, you'll probably notice I always look to the side because I can see Papa Drew on my screen over here, and I forget to look up at the camera. So uh, if you see me looking over there, it's because I'm actually looking at my computer, so I apologize. Uh, my name is Rob Scribner, and anyway, we wanted to uh, surprise everybody. Uh, we kind of gave everybody a little bit of a heads up. We had a show coming on today. Um, I'm kind of going to let Papa Drew watch the chat today because I uh, managed to uh, <laughs> not pull it up on my cell phone yet. So I'll try to secretly pull it up here in a little bit. But uh, if you uh, are watching the show or just coming on, feel free to say hi in the chat. Uh, we'd love to uh, see you for a minute. And uh, today's subject, by the way, we have some actually real good ones. And I'm actually going to probe you a little bit, Papa Drew. <laughs> Or Drew. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what I call you. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I'm going to start this off by what the conversation is. The first thing I want to ask about is some of the TV shows or TV um, uh, things are in travel channels and stuff like that. What are some of the ones you've seen and which are the ones that you've like, like or disliked? Wow, that's a good question. Um, some of the ones I like, you know, I like Eric. I like Nomadic Fanatic, you know, for all he's worth. He's 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 really good at showing an area off. He's not a hundred percent always on his facts and everything, but he does a good job of filming. Um, Traveling Robert, if you haven't seen him, yeah. Um, oh, you know, now Robert. before before I go any further, though, I want to um, the difference between channels and TV shows. TV shows, travel shows. Oh, yeah. We'll go, uh, I'll go into the other ones later, but um, no, I get um, you. Some of the TV shows you mentioned. Um, I, I've caught, have you had a chance to catch any of them? Um, the TV shows I watch are like Deadliest Catch, you know, up in Alaska. That's a really cool show. <laughs> yeah, but seen have that. you seen like <laughs> Big Time RV or uh, uh, there's a couple other ones that they've had and they've ran like a season of it and it'll be like people buying um, uh RVs. RVs and stuff like that. Have you caught any of those shows? No, I haven't caught any of that stuff. I, I we don't really I, at my house. Unfortunately, you know, I, we're a big YouTube. We just just dig on the YouTube stuff yeah, yeah. a lot, and it's hard to sit down and watch some TV once in a while on the on that kind of thing. I'd like to watch it. I don't even know if we have that on our cable. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> okay, well, um, let's switch Sorry over because no, no, probably yeah. Uh, uh, so let's go back. This uh, so. Uh, a lot of people have listened to my show for a long time, so they get an idea of which uh, shows I've been monitoring. And today I'm going to reference a show, um, a show from um, uh, Traveling Herbirds. I think that's okay. how you say it. Um, but that's later in the show. But um, So what? let's go back, and you're saying some of the shows you do enjoy. Uh, you and I both agree. We both kind of like to watch Nomadic Fanatic. For right. I like his photography. I don't like right. it when he gets off beat. It doesn't happen as often as it did in the old days. So uh, I'm kind of happy about that. Uh, by the way, I'm going to shut my camera off to you so you won't be able to see me. <laughs> okay, <about>. cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but actually, I just made your day. <laughs> hey, I see a giant cow. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to let you go back to your list that you were starting. Uh, okay. I interrupted you with, and I didn't mean to. Um, no, that's okay. Uh, so, a Nomadic Fanatic, that's one of them. Yeah, I really like Traveling Robert. He's uh, He does a really good 
way of telling a story as he travels from Florida out into the West Coast or the East Coast or wherever he's going. And he does a good job of uh, photographing and filming it and documenting it as he, as he does it. He tells a really good story. Yeah, I've caught some of I think I catch him once in a while. I, I monitor a lot of shows. So um, I think the one I really like the best, I think when I saw him, come on. Come on, Robert. Robert. There it is. Uh, Oops. <laughs> I just did what I told you not to do. <laughs> I got my chat working finally. Uh, he did one on a kind of RV boneyard. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was just uh, dozens and dozens of RVs that were all burnt out and stuff like that. And it really was a great show to remind people how dangerous, you know, fire and things like that could be in an RV. And, and, immediately after i saw that show i uh, i was in our rv full-time at the time i think anyway uh, uh i bought a few more fire extinguishers and, and just made sure our safety equipment and all of our batteries were good and our smoke detectors and all that just because of that show so uh i commend him for making a show like that and i don't think he meant it to be that way but boy when you saw some of those rvs you're going they're just destroyed by fire yeah, man. There, you know, you know what they say is right. The fire extinguisher is by the door, so you can grab it on the way out, to, so you can show everybody that you're trying to do something. Yeah, or yeah. It looks like you've done something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. They're they're they're. Newmar makes a good class A. The new ones, the nineteen, the uh, 18s, and I think some of the seventeens, where they actually put an escape door in the bathroom. So you open up the door and a ladder comes out so you're not going through the escape hatch and falling on your head. Yeah. I always wonder because we have some of those kinds in the back of our fifth wheel. And it's like, boy, to jump out those windows, that's quite a quite a drop. Yeah. And if you can fit through the windows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be more of an issue for me than uh, my wife, let's put it that way. But, I mean, what do you, you know... What do you do if you're in a class C and the kids are sleeping in the overhead, you're in the back bedroom and a fire breaks out? Yeah. What's your procedure? Yeah. What do you do for that? That's How do you get the kids out safe and you get out safe? Yeah, I mean, that's actually a great, just a show in itself, just talking about, go, and you should do it not only just in an RV, but even in a house or apartment or any, or a two-story house. What are you going to do? And do you have provisions and do you have ropes? You know, you can't be tying sheets together in the second floor. Right. I don't think that works either. <laughs> yeah. So what are, the, <laughs> what, what are the kind of shows? Uh, uh, so we, Herbert's Travels one that I right. watch. And I'm, uh, I don't watch it regularly, but I do catch a few of his shows. Okay. Um, I used to watch the, well, I still watch the Dupre's all the time, but they were really good about going into the trailer parks and documenting the trailer parks. Yeah. And, <clears throat> Something that's going to probably lead into a different segment, but uh, disaster preparedness in your RV. Mm -hmm. They did a really good show on that. Oh, did they? Really good video on that. Yeah, when a bad storm hit their RV park. Oh, yeah. I caught I some of that. Um, um, I kind of uh, drifted from them. Probably, he probably drifted from us, too, at the same time. I think we bought our house about the same time he bought his property. And... Uh, <laughs> So, you know, obviously our stories were changing and uh, uh, even our subscription people have rotated out. Had, I have less RVers as, as I did in the past and have more uh, outdoor family followers kind of things as people have known us for years. So uh, uh, anyway, so our, our listeners and, and subscribers have changed and I think his has too. Yeah, he's kind of, once he got out of the RV game, I think, they, he still had a big base of RVers, um, and then he went into the tiny home thing, and then he finally went back into the mobile repair, which he's having great success, Yeah, uh, the camper pros, uh, and the RV community is coming back to to uh, the Dupre's, and he puts out a good product. He puts out a good show. He's a good YouTuber. Oh, yeah. he's Well, he's got a great personality, so <laughs> you never know <laughs> what he's going to say or joke about. <laughs> That's right, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many times I've heard that, but yeah, it's so true. <laughs> so, um, you know, the the Travel Planet, um, I've seen some of that stuff. That's really good. They put out some good stuff. Um, I haven't seen that one yet. 
yeah, the, the, that's always a good that's a that's a good channel to watch. And then the Big Blue Planet. Have you seen that one? Maybe. <laughs> well, that's that's a really good one where they document like they they take you underwater and they show you all the the sea life and the whales and and all that good oh. stuff. That's really neat one to watch. And I think you picked that one up on Netflix, I believe, or oh, either. Okay, Am- gotcha. Either one. Yeah. So Sherry and I, for a, a YouTube channel that not only do we watch every week, but we actually even donate to, which is very rare, is uh, actually a sailing channel called SV Delos. Yep. I know them very well. Yes, we watched them since day one. We've been watching them for, well, we discovered them like four years ago, so we started from the beginning and caught up. So uh, we don't miss a thing on that show. They just do such a good job. and. Uh, they just really deserve to be supported because they really do a professional job and aren't really selling stuff. They're just uh, uh, doing their thing, and uh, um, yeah, it's just a great show. And yeah, they're having a good time. Did you catch the episode where they did the uh, night dive, the suspended yep. night dive? I think it was uh, three episodes back or yep, something, yep, and that yep, was yep. amazing. That'd be creepy, wouldn't it? <laughs> that that is. Well, I'm a I, we. My background, I have raced sailboats before i've done the ensenada race at least five times which is 125 mile uh, race Mm. and um so i have experience with that and then i used to be uh, i used to go scuba diving all the time i got my scuba certification believe it or not in high school here in southern california Uh so i used to go diving constantly so yeah i can put the two together that's just really it's cool to watch somebody else on a youtube channel and document it so well yes the way they do and it's hey that's really cool i've done that before you know and then to see other people do it it's really neat and you know what i like about it is you know if you want to apply rving to it and stuff so many of the things that they do are some of the same typical problems you would have as a nomad or a boondocker in an rv and so uh maintaining their equipment having uh the the lithium power power plant that they have uh on and on um they uh (laughs) <laughs> hey bro <laughs> uh, i finally got my chat on <laughs> okay i got my chat on <laughs> anyways but anyway uh the one thing about sv delos is so much to learn about their solar systems how they uh uh change their cook way they cook all the things all that stuff would apply to rving and so uh, um uh, the, i think the biggest thing that they RVers, you always have to deal with wear and tear from driving. Their wear and tear is not only from driving, but it's also from salt water. So they're really fighting a battle, especially with electronics. Right, trying to keep the boat up and maintain the sails and all the rigging. Oh, and yeah. then, um, you know, they're they're in a confined space just like an RV. So, yeah, you're absolutely correct. They, they have a lot of the same systems uh, except for water makers. But, I mean, RVs plug in, right? So, right. you know, I guess you could argue that. But... Yeah, it's just incredible. Um, they might have it a little bit hard because if you run out of food in the middle of the ocean, you either know how to fish or <laughs> you lose a lot of weight. That's right. No, that's how they <laughs> keep so skinny, I guess. Huh? <laughs> so, other, um, so some of the shows that we watch for RV folks is is, and we tend to watch ones that kind of give us something to talk about for our show. Um, so we we'll watch like Dan and Jen uh, Nevada. Um, uh let's see nomadic fanatic um i really only click on his shows if i think he's doing something silly and right. um uh living free i'll watch him to see what kind of goofball thing he'll do I like um, yeah uh there's a couple of, there's a new guy or well, not a new guy let me see um home on the road he I, he's, he's just in like a camper but okay. he does almost a daily video um really and uh Little House on the Road, I think he calls it. Okay. Oh, it he's just a little yeah. nomadic guy, but he's really realistic. Um, and I admire him for his honesty. And uh, he's definitely a nomad. Um, you never see his wife on the videos because she's the smart one, stays out of the camera. Um, yeah, well. But uh, he's great for us to get going on a story. So he'll bring up subject going, you know, we ought to take that subject and talk a little bit more about it on RV Talk Radio. If we talk about his show on there, we typically will put a link to his to his uh, channel if we talk about their sub, you know, subject that they brought up. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that was one we watched uh, a little bit more. I think uh, uh, 
I kind of turn them on and off after a while. I get kind of like a, um, a less junk, more journey. I kind of turn them off and on um, just to see how they're doing. I was like, I was shocked because I haven't watched them for a while and realized they have a second kid. <laughs> Yeah, and like, they're selling their they're selling their airstream, aren't they? And they're moving into a. Uh, yeah, uh, it's like when did the second kid come? I didn't even know they had a second kid. <laughs> in they're they're in a airstream. It's like, are you kidding me? It's like, yeah, ugh. now they're in a fifth wheel. I think they just bought a new fifth wheel. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like to know where they get all <laughs> their money. Have you seen Changing Lanes? Uh, I might have caught one or two shows. I'm okay, I'm hearing a little bit of uh, echo from you. Oh, okay. From you um, must have a uh, something on. No, I don't have anything on. Oh, okay. I just maybe it's oh, just my system. Speakers. Oh, it could be me oh, yeah. actually because I'm not using my headset today. Oh, okay. So, is, um, um, by the way, anybody on the chat, if you hear an echo from one of us and stuff, let me know and I'll put my headset on. But usually, I can get away with it. Uh, we have Dustin from Wayward Wags on right now, and uh, they're a new channel. Oh, okay. uh, if you haven't checked them out, Tell me about they're them. really good. Yeah, they're really good. They uh, talk about them. Uh, talk about them. Well, he he was from the army. I mean, we can't fault him for that. <laughs> um, and I guess he was a medic, and huh? he served, and which is going to be great for uh, what we're going to talk about here in a little bit, I guess. Um, and then uh, he went full time on his retirement, and uh, is going to travel around the country with uh, his uh, lizard scout. And what, his wife. <laughs> what kind of rig do they got? They got a they got a fifth wheel and a dually that they're pulling it around with. Hmm. And how long have they been on the road? They just started. They just sold their house. They downsided. They did downsize. They did a really good video. If you're thinking about going on the road, go check them out because they go step by step on how to do that. They they put together a really good series on that on so, YouTube. So say say they're. YouTube channel will cl really slow and clear so people get it. Wayward Wags. Wayward Wags. Okay. Yeah. And when you post in there, just say Papa Drew sent you. Cool. <laughs> yeah, don't say anything about Rob Scribner or the RV Talk Radio. Just just Papa Drew. <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm teasing him, guys. Nice. Um, yeah, it's pretty obvious that he, he's on RV Talk Radio. So, uh, yeah, good. We loved to help out new channels so so let me go ahead and end my subject um which is based off of last week from herbert's travels and so i'm not going to go deep into his story other than the fact it caused a very good conversation between me and my wife and it um in their particular case they're in kansas they're with some friends who are going to travel with another set of people and head to colorado well, in, uh, during that time is when a lot of those storms are going through the Mideast. I guess that's what they call it, or the plains. And so they uh, they wanted to get out of Kansas kind of quick because the weather was turning and getting really nasty. I mean, we're talking like 30, 40, 50 mile per hour winds and, and uh, just ugly weather. And so just as they were getting ready to leave Kansas, their dog got sick. And so uh, to a concerning, really, you know, a really sick problem where the dog was having diarrhea and blood and the whole work. So they thought, didn't know what was wrong with them. And uh, so they ended up taking the dog to a vet. While at the same time, all the storm and stuff is coming in and there's concern about that. They really weren't at an RV park. They're pulled over on the side. So um, his wife decided to go ahead and travel with the other folks to Colorado and leave him there while the dog was going through all these tests and all that stuff. So um, that kind of started, to, and of course they were just under major stress. And when they were telling the story, you could see that was a real stressful scenario for them. So what brought me to, so I, I was telling the same story to my wife and he's like, you know, that's one thing that once again, channels don't talk about is because you're in a mobile home, your house is moving all the time, um, especially as you get up in age like me and Sherry, uh, Drew will always be 29, um, <laughs> um, you never know what's going to happen. Like I have diverticulitis and I had a, a really scary thing happen a year ago 
And I can just, I can't even imagine it going through what I went through with that in an RV. Luckily, thank God I was home. Um, one is we had to call an ambulance for me and they're here in five minutes. And, uh, you know, the hospital's only five miles away, if, if that. Sherry was, you know, it, it was, you know, able to close up the house. Sherry was able to follow, no big deal. But think about the stress or the problems you could have if you're a full-time RVer and you have a health issue and maybe one of you can't, you know, can't drive the RV or can't hook up the fifth wheel or motorhome, what if you're only at an RV park for two or three days, like the, or if you're like one of those thousand trails things where you're only 14 days in and got to be 14 days out, and somewhere in that 14 days someone gets sick and they're in the hospital. Not to mention some of the problems with Obamacare, where some major things can't be done unless you're in your home state. And uh, so uh, I think, you know, some people really need to discuss these scenarios. Like if your partner that you if you have a partner that you're traveling with, are they capable of handling the equipment? That would be like one of the big things like um, and of course, uh, I felt like when we I, I had a 40 foot motorhome at one time and I felt like Shuri could handle that. But the fifth wheel dually, um, I think she could muddle her way through and maybe have someone help her and stuff. And she could probably pull it off. She's not an idiot. Um, but the stress of just trying to do something she's not familiar with, along with the dealing of with the stress of whatever could be going on, whether it's your pet, whether it's your partner, whether it's a family member, or whether it's a health issue, um, those can happen frequently and could be um, something that people really need to consider. And if they're up for it, some people don't have the, the can't handle stress like that very well. And, and it's sometimes a worse killer than it is the fact going through the crisis. And uh, so anyway, uh, what's some of your observations on that? Well, we we're weekend warriors, as you know, and my wife, well, I've learned over marriage, I can't tell my wife anything. I, I live longer <laughs> when I don't. And the way that I've approached it is kind of the way that I approach teaching in my other, what I volunteer for. But uh, I say, you know, if I was going to do that, this is how I would do it. And my wife is really good about wanting to learn all the systems in the rig. So she'll go out and she'll change She'll go out and she'll empty the black tank. In line, I look back. I'm standing there kind of walking her through it, kind of giving her some suggestions. And I look back and the guy behind me waiting, is in, he's in awe that my wife is out there and she's hooking up the, the slinky and she's pulling the black tank lever and the gray tank levers and she's draining it and she's doing all of that stuff. So it, it's good and I think it's really important that everybody – is not just a passenger, but everybody can jump from the passenger seat into the driver's seat and learn how to go through every single system in that rig to make it move down the road. Yeah. I think now, that's really important. Um, I, I'm actually, I, I see a comment too saying, well, the partner should always be able to handle the rig. It's just not that way with every family. I can guarantee you that. Now, sure, like I said, Sherry, I'm confident Sherry could if she had to but uh, really doesn't want to. She'd much, much rather have me control the things and stuff. But I confidently could say that Sherry could go out, actually figure out how to hook the fifth wheel to the truck and get through the process. And she's, cl and she's smart enough, too, to also just ask a neighbor and say, I'm alone, my, wife's, my husband's in the hospital or something like that. I need to hook this up. Could you help me? I mean, she's not so... Uh, arrogant that she wouldn't ask anybody you know for help right um, right she, and uh and she's a great driver um i i she'd muddle her way through it with the fifth wheel the the motor home the fifth, right when but we had the, uh, she, the motor home she could have had no problem i think she would have confidently because everything's push button with a with a uh, yeah. a 40 foot motor home it's you know push this push that all the slides come in check and all that and of course my wife what is it? 
use Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> get a note from my wife. She was listening. <laughs> Here's this is an excellent, and in fact, I've seen it used several times. If you're in a scenario where you did have to move, um, she, I don't know if you see my note here. You can't read it. It's probably, oh, it says use yeah. a transport company. And, and we actually have some friends that actually do transporting for RVs. And, oh, wow. and so, you know, um, uh, so let me tell you a little scenario. Uh, I, since we're talking, I kind of got switched on transport companies because this is fascinating. Up in Washington State, you got to remember everything's opposite. It's beautiful weather up there right now. So everybody wants to go up to Washington or Oregon because it's beautiful and cool. And then when winter comes, everybody says, get me the heck out of here. They want to come down here. So when we were up in Washington and I was finishing up where I was working and retiring from, um, we used to keep our RV up in Anacortes, Washington on, by the water. And uh, we noticed in the RV parks in the winter, t um, was it winter and summer, uh, summertime, that there'd be RV parks, uh, RV parked in all these RV places, but there's no trucks, just cars. And yet you go, how do people have all these fifth wheels and not have a towing rig? So it turns out up in Washington, this is very clever. We call them uh, sunbirds instead of snowbirds. So people down here will keep their RV up north in a storage area facility near the park that they like to go to so when summer comes they get in their car their car not their truck they drive up to wherever they want to go um, make arrangements ahead of time that what RV park you know their RV space and all that stuff instead of them going into the storage unit grabbing their fifth wheel they leave it there all year they'll call a transport company they come and pick up the RV put it in the RV spot form for four months up in a Washington state. And, uh, and, and it's not just a couple people doing this. It's a, hundreds of people doing this. And that's how we really learned a lot about the transport companies. And for 200, maybe they charge 200 bucks to do that for them. Um, but it's so much, you know, so worth it because you could take your regular car. You don't have to tow that. And especially if you're 70 years old, 75 years old, and you don't feel like pulling a big old rig anymore what a great way to go smart 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 yeah. so yeah they, they they do that down here rob they have uh at some of the rv parks i know like morrill bay which is absolutely gorgeous if you can rv and get uh get down to their campsite it's just a beautiful area you can store your rv for i think it's 65 dollars a month and you just nice. call them up, you make reservations, they come over with a forklift, and they'll just pull your rig right into your spot. Oh, nice. Yeah. And there's a there's a lot of campsites that are down here in Southern California that I will be, absolutely do I'd that. actually be interested in doing that because I want to bring my rig back down here. But I kind of I, I used to keep my rig, before we went full-timing, I used to keep my rig up in Anacortes and store it a lot and all that stuff. And I'd like to do something like that again. Um, but I've never found anything down here, so I'll have to talk to you about that. Yeah, there, the Morrill Bay, I highly recommend that. We've camped there a couple times. The campsite's kind of, you know, it's, it, what it, it is what it is, but um, it's, the, it's the location. Well, yeah, and you're well, right there by Morrill Rock, which is amazing. It's just we've, we've kind of fallen in love with that place, and what we want to do is you can buy a camper there on the property, and they measure it from uh, tip to tail, and uh, you pay for the camper, and what you're really doing is you're paying for the space the camper's in. So a lot of people will buy a 30-foot camper. They'll throw that camper away and put a brand-new rig, as long as it's 30 feet, yeah. into that spot. And then it's $65 a month to store your camper there. And you have priority over all the other campers when you're trying to get a spot. Huh, interesting. It's a good deal. Huh, I'll have to talk to you more, more about that. Very interesting. Sweet travels. What do you know about sweet travels? Sweet travels. Jim is a great guy. He's got a toter truck. He's got an awesome wife. Oh, is he the guy? A, is he the guy that contacted me? He is. Yeah, he okay. wants to uh, come on and, and talk to you about some stuff. He'd be a really good person to interview. But he's got a fifth wheel. He just got back from a real big uh, truck rally that uh, he 
did a video on and it's starting to take off. It's doing really well for him on his channel. Yeah. He's just a super nice guy. He's super helpful and he's really a genuine person. Cool. I like his channel. He's a good guy. Yeah, I wrote back to him that uh, I'm sure we could work something out, but uh, um, I uh, actually got a bunch of things going on in the next month or so, so I'm kind of hesitant to make any other schedules until I get kind of through those. But, uh, yeah, I'll catch up with him. Yeah, we're going to all meet up at uh, Quartzsite oh. and uh, do a little YouTube meetup there. Cool. Hopefully, you come, hopefully you come. Come up to Quartzsite. It's right up in your, your neighborhood. Nobody's invited us. I'm inviting you right now. Come <laughs> on. Do the radio station right there at Quartzsite. There's going to be a bunch of creators right there. I'm putting it all together. Let's let's go do that. We can meet fans. and Some of the nomads know. might throw rocks at me, though. That's okay. I'll throw <laughs> a rock right back. <laughs> and actually, the practical ones go, we're absolutely right. The radical ones hate us. So, uh, um, yeah. But, all right. I mean, I like all forms of RVing, but there's just certain things that, guys, you didn't, well, you just heard us talk about some things you get need to know about and things you need to be careful about. And, and then don't go selling your house, buying an RV, not doing the homework first and get out there and find out you made a mistake. So, yeah, I, I don't know about full time. And I, I know I've I've talked to Jim's having just a blast on the road right now. Yeah. And uh, I, Dustin seems to be doing real well over there, too. So I, those are two people that I know that are doing really well on the road. So the rest of them, I mean, I think a lot of it is they show you all the good stuff and edit out a lot of the bad stuff. <laughs> and that's kind of the problem when people watch this stuff. They go, wow, look at all the glamour stuff that's going on. Look at all the neat places you go. Well, I guarantee that there's probably some bad stuff that they don't want to show you in some of the videos. And they edit some of that stuff out. You know, I, it, it, you have to. I'm not saying that they're trying to fool anybody or they're trying to trick anybody or, or anything like that. I'm just saying it looks really glamorous and the grass is always greener but always dip your toe into the pool and check the temperature first. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and like, I think I mentioned in the last show, uh, Dan and Jen, um, mentioned it in one of their shows, the etiquette show that they go, you know, this seems to be a handful of the people doing shows out there. just saying, join the lifestyle, join the freedom, sell everything. This is the life for you. And, uh, where others are going, this is just our life. Like, this is what we're doing. We're documenting it. If you want to watch our channel, you know, and enjoy our journey, great. But I'm not on here to try to sell this to you. I'm just letting you. It's like watching SV Dallas. They're not telling you you should become a sail, you know, buy a sailboat and sail. There's like, enjoy our show. And we're sailing anyway. Come join us every week and we'll show you stuff. And uh, that's, those are the great, those are great channels like that. Yeah. Um, and Jim is probably shaking his head right now, Rob, going, that's us, because that's what he's doing. He started his channel out not for YouTube, but to document and to show up for his kids. And he said, you know what, I'm going to put it up on YouTube and advertise it a little bit. And people want to watch, they watch. If they don't, they don't. And um, he's that's why he's got a really good he's got a really good channel. He's going to go places with that channel. You wait and see. Yeah, that's cool. Um uh, actually, it was kind of interesting was since we changed the channel, uh, our channel to Range Rob, which is going to be more family oriented. I'm already getting interesting notes going. I can't wait to watch this channel grow. And I go, well, I've had it a long time. It just kind of stopped growing because we've been outdoor travel channel for so long, but we weren't doing any outdoor. Tra <laughs> we weren't doing any outdoor travel. <laughs> and I don't blame our listeners going, Rob, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just sitting at a house selling poopy bags. <laughs> Hey, speaking of poopy bags, oh, look what I got. Look at that. I, That's I got a box. box. What's in it? It's a cool box. What's in the box? It's, it's, I don't know. Let's open it up and find out. If I can figure out how to open it. Let's, oh, here we go. We'll just use our, here we go. Let's see what this is. Let's unbox here. Well, look at that. Look at that. It's look Ranger Rob got. Pet Poopy Bags. <laughs> Those are the highest quality poopy bags ever, and they got handles, easy we're gonna, tie handles. And we're gonna have to do a review on this, and I got the perfect dog to yeah. do that review. So, uh, by the way, those are lemon scented. They're extra large bags. <laughs> um, they're deeper. They can handle your dog. 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, um, uh, next time we do a show, let me know what you think. I'm sure you're going to love them. Um, yeah, I'm going to put it in my new episode, uh, Dog and Vlogging with Cleo. Sweet. Uh, yeah. And we'll do a whole, uh, we'll use them, we'll review them, and we'll tell you all about them. Yeah, I was, uh, for, um, just for bringing it up, um, so what you got is what's, what we call the sheets. They're just sheets you can put in your back pocket. Um, so there's 120 of those. Um, but we did have viewers uh, last year saying, I love your bags, but I wish they were on rolls. So we did create, let's see if I get this in front of the camera. These are the Ranger Rob Poopy bags, which are the same bags, which, uh, um, but it comes with a dispenser. So if you look really close, I get a lot of glare here. You'll see there's a fabric dispenser in there. And so the little purple box comes with one month supply um, with the little fabric dispenser. And then we also have another um, box, which I can't reach from here, that has refills. So uh, anyway, so we do have the Ranger Rob poopy bags on rolls too for those that want the rolls and want the little dispensers to put on their leash. But uh, for like you and I, I, I like the sheets myself. Yeah, thank you very much. We'll uh, review oh, these. Oh, yeah. Give you an honest review. Yeah, go large for it, man. and small dogs. Yep. Love that. We have a very large dog. Yes. Emphasis on large dog. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Not, now, yeah, I bet you can't wait to go out in the yard and pick something up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Free. Can hardly wait till tomorrow morning. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, by the way, the other thing is kind of interesting. I was telling, I think I told you about this, but we took uh, maybe a half dozen of those bags and we got them in a little cage and we put them out in the yard in, in the weather. And they've been out there for like two and a half months. They are disintegrating. Yeah. So, that's, the that's point cool. is, you know, we say they're eco friendly. They are. They're, they actually break down in landfills. So uh, uh, for those are and so what we're doing is we're making a video documenting how they're breaking down in the weather. And so uh, uh, so people can actually see that although these are super strong bags, you can fill them up with water like a water balloon. They're that, that strong and your hand's not going to go through them or anything like that. But if you leave them in the weather for about two or three months, they will start disintegrating. And that's amazing about that. And that's what we really like about it. So. Yeah, that's cool. And they have handles so uh, sure. for heavy lifting. <laughs> that and to keep your her hands out of the business. Yeah, exactly. That really sucks. Have you ever, so, have, yeah. you, have you got those little poopy bags that don't have handles and you have to try to tie a knot in it? Yes, you got to yeah. spin yeah. them around and try I, and I hate not that. touch the, the – yeah, yeah that's so, always – Yeah, so I appreciate yeah. you pulling those out. Those are, uh, those are important to us. That was – those were created while we were – my reason for creating them is because I'm an RVer. And I don't know how many tra how many times you've been down a trail and someone's picked up after a dog and left it there. Or uh, they just don't pick up at all. And so I wanted to create a bag that was easy to use, nice and big, ties up easy, and you can carry it along with you on a trail because the handle's no big deal until you get to a garbage can. And so I can't make it any easier other than the fact that I will sign Drew to everybody that has poopy bags so he'll pick up after your dog. But Oh, uh, great. I can't do that, obviously. So the least thing I could do is create a bag that worked really good. So I'm the Italian pooper scooper. That's right. That's perfect. Um, uh, worked out great. So you and I were talking. Uh, oh, I was going to mention uh, uh, in the chat is a lot of people didn't realize that we actually have um, RV Talk Radio mugs and hats. So... Uh, I put a link to our uh, mugs if you guys ever want to get one. And, um, um, you know, you got to push the merch once in a while. And since we're doing a live show, I'm able to put it in the chat. So uh, my other syndicated shows do that. So I thought, well, I can do it, <laughs> considering I own a radio station. So, uh, But the next subject you and I were talking about it was kind of interesting. You kind of surprised me. Is I was asking you how many RV parks you've been to that have fire pits. Yeah, uh, so, down here in Southern California, there's a lot. Uh, they just tried to rate, uh, wage war, if I could speak correctly, on the fire pits down in Huntington Beach. 
and uh, they had their first uh, revolt. Why? And everybody told them to go pound sand. Well, because the you know the global warming and the smoke is killing the atmosphere and all this other garbage. And the uh, the RVers and the beach people told them to go pound sand. The fire pits have been there since forever and ever. Yeah, forever. And you're not going to come in here and take our fire pit away from us. We want to have our fires on the beach and make our marshmallows and our memories. Yeah. And so, uh, so my question before I clarify that, like some of the places, like you like to go to state state parks and national parks and stuff, correct. but um, are you mostly referencing state national parks, or are you actually going to RV parks that actually have fire pits? Nope, just the state parks. The 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 private parks that I've gone to, uh, they don't have fire pits. A lot of them are just uh, asphalt and uh, uh, telephone poles and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very, very frequent that the uh, private parks will have a fire pit. Uh, it's all the state parks down here that have the fire pits. On, believe it or not, I mean, it blew yeah. me away. But yeah, and, and up and down the coast, the only one state park that doesn't have it would be Silver Strand State Beach. Now, a way that we can get around this um, in Southern California is on my rig – we have a propane fire pit that hooks yeah. up right into the uh, rig itself to my uh, major propane bottle, and uh, it's a stay more connection. And then I just put quick disconnects on it, yeah. and it uh, works out real great. So how do you like that? I mean, I, I've uh, been kind of thinking about getting one, but um, cause, uh, there actually is one RV park that I've been to that actually has fire pits, and I was up in Washington State. But I've never seen another one since. And I'm talking about RV parks. Now, I agree with you. I've been in uh, state parks and national parks that have them. But RV parks, very rare. Most people, if they want any kind of fire pit, they have to do what you're doing. Right. And we've been to, um, we've been to hit at an RV park a couple times for the little kids. Because I've never turned anybody away from a campfire. Oh, no. Ever. It's, and uh, it's not magical about a campfire. Yeah, you you can't go camping, and, and you know we always have extras, so we'll break out the s'mores and the graham crackers and all that stuff for the kids. But we'll pop out our propane fire pit and we'll hook it up to our fourteen gallon uh, propane, and we'll have a fire pit. Even like uh, Jim just said, sweet sweet travels. That up in eastern Washington right now, you can't use the fire pits that you can burn wood in because of the fire conditions. Well, yes. propane. They let us down here in Southern California have a major problem with fires, and they'll let us burn the propane fire pits no matter what, as long as it's off the ground. Yeah, cool. Um, so uh, I know you told me, but I can't remember it. Um, are you are you retiring soon? No, I wish. I wish. <laughs> I wish I was retiring. <laughs> <laughs> Got a ways to go, eh? Yeah, I got. I'm 48 years old. I'd I'd like to retire eventually, but. I still got to work. I got to put in my licks. Yeah, I've been there, done that. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I did go as soon as I could at 55. But, uh, of course, I've got to do things between now and 64 that, uh, um, you know, it never ends. Just because I retired from one thing doesn't mean I, I got other. I got to sell poopy bags. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's help you do and some radio of that. Stations in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, those are available on Amazon, people. I forgot to tell you. So uh, you don't have to buy them from me. You don't have to go to a special shopping cart. Just go to Amazon, type in Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, and uh, they're there. So and if you're watching if you're watching us and typing in right now, it's in a link below. <laughs> it is. It is, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. There's, there's a YouTube thing. Check out the description below. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. So yeah, the, uh, of course that's our sponsor. So it's, they are in there. So by the way, a link to your channel and your Facebook page is also in the description. Appreciate that. Along Thank with you. Uh, RV talk radio and all of our 2000 different links of things. We have Twitter, we have Twitter accounts and we have Facebooks and we have radio stations and all kinds of stuff. So you're going to be famous someday. You're now on two episodes on good talk radio. It's awesome. I love. Thank you for having me back. I mean, no. I thought I blew it the first time, but I guess you were a glutton for punishment to have me back. <laughs> I know. I'm sitting over here going, I know somebody crazy enough to do another show with me. <laughs> I don't. It's you know. I, I enjoy it. I, yeah, I enjoy it. You're 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 a fun guy to chat with and everything. And plus, I mean, you know, it, it's fun to come over here and kill a Friday night on on Good Talk Radio, and and just, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, and. Poopy what, bags. What I, really, what I also really enjoyed 
was last week when we had Ross. And yep. you could feel a little bit. I know yeah, I know you're going to know exactly what I'm going to be talking about here in a minute. You could feel that little bit of old schoolness where you could tease each other and nobody mm-hmm. gets offended. They just laugh at their differences. Yep. You know, so we make fun about Ross being old or you having a beard or, or me doing something. And, and it's all kidding, all kidding aside kind of thing. And no, and it's how life used to be where we, uh, you know, like I go hunting and we'd have somebody that was Jewish or something like that. And we'd have fun with the fact that they had different beliefs and different things. And we could have fun with that. And they, or we'd yeah. have somebody that had, uh, came from a different culture and we could tease them about that at the same time they could tease back and nobody was ever offended. And yeah, so get- I, I felt that kind of love in the last show where uh, the three of us could just poke at each other and have a blast. Yeah. Ross and I have been friends for uh, a couple, a year now, over a year. We talk almost every day. We talk today and uh, we, you know, off camera, you know, we can kind of let our hair down a little bit and, and, and joke around a little bit more yeah. um, stuff that I would never say on camera. Of um, yeah. With and, Ross. And, yeah. And because, you know, I don't pr- want to offend anybody, but um, Ross and I go back and, and, we just have a good, we're just like, uh, you know, two old friends, but if you really want to hear people banter with each other and have a good time, listen to two vets from different branches of the service, oh, yeah, sit the down best. and talk to each other. Yeah. Those then guys you'll hear the some best. ribbon going on there. Yeah. And those guys really know how to rib each other in a really fun way. I mean, it's, I've seen that over and over vet. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's probably cause of where they came from and stuff. They just learned not to be offended and enjoy each other. And enjoy differences, embrace it, and 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 that's what I really miss. And so I, I feel like we're losing some of that. Where diversity is wonderful, and diversity is fun when you can actually talk about the differences and have fun with it. And so those days are going away, and it's so sad. Yeah. Well, you know how I look at it, Rob. Is look when we get pricked or we get cut, we all bleed red. <laughs> it's how you act and and how you treat other people is how I judge you. Yeah, that, that's that's how that's how I was raised. That's and I truly believe that, you know, so it, you can joke with people and have fun with people. And, you know, if they can't take it and they don't have a thick skin, then, you know, maybe they're not meant to be your friends. True. Very sad. So, uh, um, by the way, did I get through all the lists of shows that you liked? I know I kind of interrupted on that. Yeah, you did. You're we're, we're absolutely good. You want to go uh, rehash any of the other stuff? Yeah, I wanted, well, I wanted to. It was a show that I mentioned to you, and I want to make sure I, I say his channel right. Let me peek real quick. Um, just, just take a second. Uh, I just want to make well, sure. Jim's, I, Jim's telling me I have a big mouth while you're looking that up. Okay, Jim's here. telling me that I have a big mouth and I talk too much. No, you're great. Jim, it's not my mouth that's big. It's my stomach. <laughs> so We're uh, working on that donut at a time. Yeah. So uh, the name of the channel, I did say it right, Little House on the Road. And he just did a show. If you look at his thumbnail, it just says stop. And uh, he talks about uh, uh, the realities of being on the road and the things you really need to consider, especially if you're trying to control your budget. And so what I really like is he does show great places that he's traveling. But he says, you know, if you're going to do this, you really need to know this, that you know, I've got to keep within a budget. I can only carry 40 gallons of water. I have all these issues. You won't be able to take a shower every day. Um, there's all these little things. And it's like, uh, nobody talks about this, you know, and it, I, that's what I really like about his channel. Um, so, uh, uh, that's one of the things that we put a lot of emphasis on on good talk radio is we talk about lifestyle. We don't talk about how to fix RVs and maintenance and stuff like that. Um, we have, there's other channels that are doing such a great job at that. It doesn't make any sense to have another one, but, uh, understanding the lifestyle, understanding the safety issues, understanding your relationship with your partner and, um, um, experiment a lot before you make the big commitment <laughs> that's the big thing i worry about <laughs> what what i would recommend uh anybody to do and um I, I you know i have experience not just in rving but in the military too yeah. i drove i drove those big tanks for a long time mm. and uh, there's four of us inside that little box and we go out for months at a time so before you step into any of this stuff 
what I would do is I would rent an RV for a couple weeks and live out of the RV for a couple weeks with you and your wife. And you'll learn how close you are, especially when you're trying to back up or do something. You'll learn how good your relationship is in, in a couple, <laughs> two, three weeks yeah, <laughs> living in sure. that close, close box. And then you'll see if the RV lifestyle is for you. I think that, other, that's what I would recommend. I think the other reality that really comes into play is – and and it's going to your financial situation really dictates this but are you somebody that can fix things i mean i mean are you a major fixer or just a light fixer because that's important depending like are you going to buy an older rig that you're going to put some love and care in or do you need to buy new where you can take it in for warranty and let other people do the work there's nothing wrong with either one some people just don't have the, the uh, knack for doing uh, that kind of work. Um, but if you can do a little bit of it, like maintain your tires, do a couple of electrical things, fix a, a broken pipe once in a while or something like that, then, um, you know, maybe you can buy a one, two, three year old RV and be okay. But to buy a 20 year old RV and you're not a fixer upper big mistake. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> How old, is your, how old is your rig, by the way? My RV is a 2007, but mm. the problem with my RV is I bought it out of a rental yard. Oh. So it was it it had a lot of love before I ever got it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, there's a lot of things that I've learned turning, and I can turn some wrenches. I'm not scared of turning wrenches, but there's some things that I know I can't do. A man's got to know his limitations. I think that's how it went, right? That's pretty important. Um, yeah, I agree yeah. with that. So YouTube is your best friend. <laughs> no, I, see, I so much it's, believe in that. You can find anything on, on YouTube when it comes to fixing something. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, it, you, you go, I can't believe there'll be a video on this, but I'm going to look anyway. And there's a video on it. Yeah. Yeah, we blew out our um, – coming back from uh, San Diego, we blew out our uh, our air conditioner. I don't even know what it's – for all intents and purposes, I'm going to call it a widget, but all the wires went into this thing. And, again, I'm not a mechanic, so I don't know. But I did know enough when I opened the hood to look at this thing, and it was melted with wires in it. So we, we – <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah, that, uh, that, first... that could be your problem right there. I don't think so. <laughs> There's your problem. Your widget <laughs> melted. Yeah, the widget um, br- <laughs> That's how I look at it too, uh, sir. My widget's broken. Oh, okay, let's look up your widget. <laughs> so instead of taking it into a mechanic, um, we just uh, took some scissors and cut that thing right out, and went over to the auto parts store and said, "I need one of these." And the guy gave it to us. We put all the wires back the same way we took it off, and guess what? We have air conditioning again. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Price yeah. saved me their bucks. <laughs> I had a. The dumbest little thing, I have a 2002 Ford Dually, and it has a little electronic thing up above that cha- shows you the temperature outside and does a little calculation for mileage and stuff. Anyway, it went out, and and I lived, I didn't even bother to touch it for almost a year. <laughs> Finally, I go, I'm going to open this up and see if I can do anything with it. So I opened it up, and there was just a, there's a little electronic card in it, um, and so I went ahead and pulled the card and I eventually like go into an I uh, go to a Ford dealer and it's like this goes up there do you got one of these and it's like here you go I was like <laughs> it's like why did I wait a year to fix this <laughs> because it it's, just... it, it's intimidating you get into the car and you'd like when I saw the melted thingamabobber I was like oh god how much is this gonna cost me on yeah, this I know with over a hundred thousand miles on it you know and and I knew the devil of what I was going to get into, right? Yeah. I knew that this this RV was going to need a lot of TLC. I didn't, and I knew that I needed to turn wrenches. So I said, you know what? I can save myself a ton of money. We're going to call it Johnny Cash because at one piece at a time, I'll have a brand new rig. Yep. <laughs> and we just replace stuff as it breaks. Yep. Or as my wife decides to not make wide turns and pull out of the RV park and clip a tree and rip the awning off the side of the awning. Yeah, that happens. Uh, that, that was, that was bad. <laughs> I don't know how to fix that. Anybody know how to fix an awning, please 
comment below or uh, send me an email because to, I don't know YouTube. how to fix that. Uh, yeah. You, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube it. YouTube it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, um, you'd be amazed. Uh, luckily, there's a couple of really good channels out there that just focus on maintenance. And uh, they've been around forever. So typically, there's not many things that could happen in your RV that you can't find on YouTube. So very helpful. Absolutely. <laughs> so do you, do you carry tons of tools on your RV? I do. I, I figured out what the tools were because, you know, when we were in the Marine Corps, I broke a tank. I just turned it in the maintenance bay and said, you fix it. Yeah, yeah. I ride it, you fix it. You make it go, I'll ride on top of it. It um, actually took me a while to get my tools the way I wanted to, but um, but once you get the tools, you can fix anything as long as you... And don't be afraid to get the still carry duct tape and bailing wire. Cause I was just about ready to say that, because <laughs> that's been a go-to of ours. Oh, definitely. I, I, I Your funny story, We and this will be in the video coming up in, in the, on Sunday when I post it, but... The wife, my wife met me at, at the campsite and I had gone earlier and, and reserved it. And I'm, well, that'll be in the, the vlog. But uh, I, I look at it, the side of the coach, and I said, she didn't tell me she hit something. And I go, there's something weird about this. What's going on? I look down and she had the awning taped to the side of the coach with painter's tape <laughs> and was driving down the road with it. I was, <laughs> Hey, it works. So she used painter's tape to hold the arm of the RV to the side of the motorhome. Sweet. I mean, you got to yeah, do what she, you got to do, she, man. She did. She got it uh, 100 miles that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, um, when we blew our tire and uh, blew a panel off and it was just flopping, we put we actually rebuilt the whole side with with duct tape until we got to Las Vegas. And uh, But, yeah, I mean, you just got to do what you got to do. That duct tape... I never thought I'd be like, why am I carrying this big roll of tape? <laughs> Do you have a crisis? <laughs> I, I tell you what, duct tape and super glue are oh, yeah. two of your best friends. Even in a first aid application, you can put super glue in a cut, and, and if it's a deep cut, and push it together, and it'll it'll coagulate and heal the cut. Or you can glue your paneling back on the RV when the kids rip it off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So you go. There's there's a pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, I mean, uh, those are the first three things to buy is like the the, uh, the tape, the bailing wire, and the uh, glue, and, and the then ties. buy your then start buying tools. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, shit. Exactly. oh man, we're, I gotta have to get us out of here. So uh, <laughs> hey guys, I want to thank everybody for listening. Um, once again, it's an unscheduled show. Uh, Typically, yeah, don't forget to buy your poopy bags at Amazon. We appreciate it. It really helps us out, and they're a good product. And thank, thanks for showing those. Um, uh, I want to thank Drew for coming on the show today. Thank you um, for having me. So for those of you who uh, listen to RV Talk Radio, the podcast version of this, all of our podcasts come out on Mondays. So if you're a regular podcast people, you're, uh, you're kind of wondering why we're talking a little different this time. It's because we're using we're doing a live stream at the same time. Um, but Mondays, uh, like uh, the show we did a couple of days ago, comes out this Monday on the podcast and on YouTube. And this show, the following Monday, this show will be out, out there. And a copy of this audio show goes to, oh, you guys keeping up with this? Good Talk Radio. This show is syndicated. Uh, and plays RV Talk Radio on Saturday and Sunday, and plays uh, older um, plays our episodes over and over, and we got hundreds of them, obviously. So uh, please take the time to go to Good Talk Radio if you want to catch uh, um, some of our other episodes on Good Talk Radio. You can uh, listen to them on Saturdays and Sundays. If I, did I forget anything? And don't forget the link to all of Drew's stuff is down in the description. And uh, I think in no time we'll make a Wolfman Jack out of you. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, you get your new mic, so next week I, he's going to buy a turntable, and uh, right, and then uh, uh, you're going to turn the lights down and have some uh, like a disco ball behind you, and and then start turning music. If we can get up to 77 miles an hour, I can get us back into the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, I got to get us out of here. So, hey guys, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later. Bye, guys. Bye. 
Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.